The mayor of Red Lake says his municipality will likely have to evacuate. Firefighters are also battling dozens of fires in northern Ontario. The fire started just a day ago, but fueled by high winds and dry conditions, it's grown rapidly, bearing down now on Red Lake, a town of 4,000 in northwest Ontario. I remember Woodland Caribou being extremely wild, full of fish, and lots of jack pines, and tons of burn area as well. I remember the camping being really good and really easy, and I just remember it being a lot of fun. And it felt almost uh, unexplored and untouched. My first trip to Woodland Caribou was with my brother, and uh, we booked a flying canoe trip, but it was really based on fishing. We spent, I think, the better part of two weeks in there, and the ice had just come off. It was cold. It was a really cold trip. It's in my top couple trips I've ever done, ever. Well, I love you. Say bye, Woodland Caribou. Bye, Woodland Caribou. Bye, Woodland Caribou. If I could go back and do it again, I would do it tomorrow. It was just a, it was a pretty amazing experience. It was my first time in one of Ontario's wilderness parks. You know, where there's no portage signs and trail markers and we were the only ones there. As far as I know, we were the first people into the park that year on a canoe trip. So it was a pretty amazing experience for both me and my brother. I think one of the biggest reasons I want to go back to Woodland Caribou is to show my wife this amazing place. You know, she's probably heard me talk about it almost as much as any other place in Canada, and that's a lot. Well, at least the canoe's stable, eh? <laughs> I think it's only fair to her that she gets to go and experience the same spot. Well, for probably the last four years, I've uh, tried to, to book trips to go back uh, it just never seems to work out, whether it be, uh, normally it's due to forest fires. I've had a couple times where we've been on our way there and a forest fire has popped up in the middle of the park somewhere. Uh, the one year the town was even being evacuated when we were planning on going, so it just hasn't worked out. I've definitely got some concerns. I mean, over 50% of the park burnt uh, last year alone in 2021. So that is a huge amount of the park. And that's on top of all the other previous burns, which is significant. Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely concerned. I've even talked to quite a few paddlers that say they won't go back just because of the amount of devastation that's taken place there. So, we'll see. My name is Ashley and this summer I went on a canoe trip to Woodland Caribou for the first time. The trip started with a very long drive. It took us about 20 hours to get there. And the next day we got shuttled into the park or to our access point. The drive there was a very bumpy ride. So we are here. We made it to uh, the Ani Lake access in Woodland Caribou and we got the next two weeks to go explore, fish, have fun, and just really enjoy 
uh, the end of August here in a pretty amazing part of Ontario. So, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's go do this. So I've done quite a few portages in Woodland Caribou and yeah, most of them thankfully are fairly short, but I couldn't believe how rough the first couple portages were. There were so many blowdowns, it was unbelievable. I was definitely thinking to myself for a second, what did we get ourselves into here? We were climbing over trees and climbing through branches. Um, we, yeah, we were surprised that it was like that at an access point. Well, uh, how, how were the first uh, few portages there? Um, a lot harder than I was expecting. Yeah. It was it was all fine. Like it's just it, I wasn't expecting um, it to be like that at the access. Yeah, I, I have to say I'm a little surprised as well, as yeah. you said, at the access. So we're now on Ani Lake and we did, was it three portages? So yeah, it's it's been quite the journey already and we're not technically in the park yet. No, <laughs> it's still crown land, I think, outside, just outside the park. So, so yeah, it's been fun. My first impressions were... You know, it was pretty, of course, but it really, initially, it didn't seem too different from other places that we'd been in Northern Ontario. You know, when we first got in there, there were no signs of burns. So it was just trees and lakes and moss. You know, it was it was pretty, but but nothing nothing too different. Not what I was expecting. I remember being on a lake and we were paddling to the far corner to get to a portage and the closer and closer we got, the landscape just changed so suddenly. It was just decimated. You could see where the fire had been. The trees were just skinny black charcoal toothpicks. Everything was dead. There, I mean there was a little bit of regrowth you could see but it was it was a really stark landscape. When I first saw the burn areas, I initially felt quite sad, actually. I know that a lot of forest fire is 
natural and you know it's it's part of renewal without obviously being an expert I imagine that some of the forest fire would be a result of climate change and knowing that makes me feel sad you know looking at these areas that are so dead and imagining what they used to look like. Yeah, it's kind of a weird experience. first few days of the trip they'd gone really quite well you know we really didn't have any major difficulties and Ashley seemed to be having a good time and I was having a good time um, I was really excited to make our way towards some lakes that I'd camped on before and see what they looked like see whether the campsites that I'd stayed at were still intact and whether they were as amazing as I remember them Bye, campsite, you're a good one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. I was also really hoping that we'd have some highlight reel moments, you know. That, that first trip that I took to Woodland Caribou was such a special one for me, and, and I really wanted Ashley's first time in Woodland Caribou to stand out as much as my first trip did. As we made our way towards Mexican Hat Lake that day, it was really interesting seeing the familiar territory. It was also kind of funny to uh, relive some moments from the past. Mexican Hat is beautiful, but it's cool to be back. And I think almost right in this spot was one of the few walleye that we caught. And I, <laughs> I, <laughs> my brother will laugh, but, um, and he tells the story differently, but <laughs> we, I had the, I had the walleye on the line and it was just a little walleye, it wasn't very big. So I, I took my rod and I just kind of flipped it, flipped the walleye into the center of the canoe. And I, I said, Lo, get the net, get the net. And my brother turns around with the net, hits the walleye that's dangling in the center of the boat and hits it, it, it spits the hook and, he, and it flies out of the boat into the water. I was so angry. It was hilarious, it was hilarious after the fact, but oh my God, was I ever annoyed with him. As we first started getting into the burn areas, one thing that I was wondering to myself was, are we actually going to see any wildlife here? But as it happened, we had probably 
two of the best wildlife sightings we've ever had. We were paddling through a narrow winding creek and Keenan stood up to kind of get so he could see over the grasses to see what direction to head in. And he said to me, he, he started whispering and he was like, Ashley, Ashley, stand up. And I stood up and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm like, I don't, I don't see anything. What is he talking about? And then next thing I knew, what I thought was a big piece of wood started to move and it turned out to be a ginormous rack from a bull moose and this bull moose just climbed out of the water and just kind of started running towards um, like the mainland and into the forest and I don't think I've ever seen a moose that big in my entire life. It was amazing and it was also a huge relief that we didn't get closer to it because if we'd have kept paddling around that creek we would have come face to face with it. So thank goodness Keenan stood up and saw it. <laughs> That might have been the biggest moose I've ever seen. I think that might be the biggest moose in the world. I don't know. That was a huge, huge moose. Oh, I'm so glad that we saw him before we got up on him. Me too. Glad that he ran away because I wouldn't want to get any closer. Like, that moose was enormous. Huge. You could just feel like... You could almost feel the ground move as he was running <laughs> away. Honestly, that thing is... Yeah, a... you could hear Like, you could hear his hooves, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm really, really, like, my, my heart was pounding when he came out of the water. I'm like, oh, man, yeah. please do not come this way. Please yeah, don't come this way. The other wildlife sighting that really stands out to me is um, seeing an actual woodland caribou. We were on a lake in a huge burn area, you know, not, not much vegetation around. And I remember we were just kind of messing around. We weren't actually paddling in that moment. We were kind of messing around and joking and chatting. I think maybe the dogs noticed something. They're, they have amazing noses for wildlife. And every time they, when they start sniffing the air, we pay attention and we look to wherever their noses are pointed and through these burnt trees we saw this caribou we couldn't believe it it was an amazing sighting obviously when you go to woodland caribou that's what you want to see at least that's what i wanted to see i wanted to see a caribou but i did not expect to see one I remember before we went into the park, our outfitter had told us about this cave that you could potentially paddle your canoe into. Well, there's the cave. I think both Ash and I were pretty excited to go see if we could find it. When you're in places like that, you can't help but imagine who's been here before you, who were the first people that came into this cave. That was, that was really, really cool. Well, what did you think of that? That was really cool. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So we've had some pretty amazing experiences so far, from seeing the moose, to the caribou, paddling into that cave, 
truthfully, the trip was flying by, and there really wasn't a whole lot of time left. There was one more destination lake that I really wanted to check out, and it had probably been my favorite lake on uh, my previous trip. We were actually told that that lake was pretty much completely burnt up, but nonetheless, I wanted to see it with my own eyes. That's a nice fish. Nice. That's so nice. That is our lunch and dinner. Woohoo! Nice. Is it blue again? Uh, it's got a little bit of blue, but it's not as blue. Ah, it's got, see the tail? Some blue there. I stayed right here with my brother for a few days. She's pretty well completely burnt. Kind of sad to see. Crazy being back on this lake and just seeing the difference from just a few years ago. It feels like a completely different place. It felt harsh then. It feels really harsh now. And all the spots like that you remember staying or fishing around or like yeah just devastated completely completely burnt to a crisp almost everything on this lake other than a handful of islands so we made it to probably my favorite lake in the park and Although I probably was a little bit disappointed that some of the familiar sites were completely destroyed, I definitely don't regret going. We ended up actually having a couple of the most amazing nights we've ever had in the backcountry on this lake. The sunsets we experienced were out of this world. So we were coming to the end of our trip. It had already been so amazing, already probably one of my favorite trips. And for two nights in a row, we got to see the Northern Lights, which was just amazing. It was something that we've been wanting to see for such a long time. So this was a huge bucket list thing for us. I remember the first night that uh, we saw the aurora, Ashley had a little bit of a headache and I was just getting up to grab her an Advil from the canoe barrel. And I looked out across the lake and I just saw the aurora dancing. And I screamed at Ashley to get out of the tent and come check it out. We spent hours sitting there watching. I didn't want to go back to bed. It was just a very unforgettable experience. Thank you.
I think now, looking back on the trip, one of my biggest fears was that it wouldn't live up to my expectations. And what I remembered as this incredibly wild and amazing place was really just something that I'd made up in my head and it didn't really exist. I talked to my wife Ashley about this park so much and I didn't want her to be disappointed by it either. The reality though was that this place even though it had changed quite a bit since the last time I was there, it was just as special and amazing as I had remembered. My overall experience was awesome. I really, really loved it. I definitely had some concerns and hesitation before we went there. Is it even worth going? You know, knowing that it had been through so much forest fire, like, is it gonna be worth it? Why do I wanna go and look at a bunch of burnt trees and charcoal? But I'm so glad we went. I can honestly say it's one of my favorite places. Yes, it was challenging, but we had a really, really awesome time. And it's, there's something about it. It's like you're walking into a different world or you're on a different planet. I would definitely go back. When I heard Ashley say that this place is like being on another planet, I think that's what makes this place so incredible. It's just not like anywhere else. Being able to hop in a canoe and travel across what has to be some of the most incredible canoe country in the world, that's a pretty special experience. Seeing plants and animals survive on this sometimes moonscape looking terrain is kind of mind blowing but I guess it's all part of life. This truly has to be one of my favorite places on earth and I already cannot wait to go back. <laughs>